Hi friends, welcome to my channel VLSI Gyan. In this video, we will see what is multi-cycle path in VLSI and how to write a constraint for multi-cycle path. So if you are watching for the first time, I request you to subscribe to my channel to get all the stuff related to VLSI. So without wasting the time, let's go into the video. So friends, multi-cycle path. Multi-cycle path is a flip-flop to flop path where the combinational logic delay in between these flops is permissible to take more than one clock cycle. Like you have a complete flop to flop to flop path and between these two flops you have a logic, combinational logic, which is a little bit uh, slow or we can say it's a bigger one. It takes more than uh, one clock cycle to propagate its output. So that time what will happen? the next uh, flop will not be able to capture the data which is sent by the uh, launching flop in the next clock cycle. So that time what is required, you need to provide more number, you need to provide some more um, number of uh, cycle time for the capture flop so that it can capture the data. So these paths where the data is not required to reach the capture flop within one clock cycle as discussed, these are not required to be uh, we reach the destination in one clock cycle. Multipaths are the paths with in intentionally, as we have discussed, which are intentionally requiring because there is no such kind of error or anything. There is a combinational logic which is taking more number of uh, clock cycles. So because of that, we require more clock cycles to reach the uh, capture flop so that the capture flop can capture the data. So information cannot possibly be inferred by the timing analysis because this type of the information the designer has to specify. So for that, what the designer will do, he will provide with constraints. So these are the multi-cycle path constraints. So through the multi-cycle path, the designer will tell the tool the uh, for while doing the SGA timing analysis that these are the paths where you don't have to check that the setup and the whole requirements are like for the one clock cycles. We have certain uh, setup and whole checks for one clock cycle. If you are transmitting the data from one flop to the another flop, you have the default setup and whole check. If you are not uh, mentioning any multi-cycle path, that tool will think or uh, will not be able to recognize whether it is a multi-cycle path or a normal path. So it will uh, check the in the same way. So to avoid that, anyhow, this type of the circuits, if you are not providing any information, they will definitely fail. So as a designer, it is your responsibility to provide the tool, the information that these are the multi-cycle paths, which require more number of the clock cycles than uh, the normal operation. So uh, how to, uh, let us see an example. Like, uh, as I said, this is a one flop. And this is the another flop. In between these two flops, you can see a big green color uh, thing. That is nothing but the, we have like a combinational logic. Okay. So it is a combination logic, which is taking more time. It can be a counter or anything like anything, which it requires more number of clock cycles. So the clock is given to the D flip flop one, U1, and is also applied to the U2. So what happens in the normal situation is the moment the clock is applied, the this is called the launch flop and this is called the uh, capture flop in the static timing analysis, right? So when the cap, uh, launch flop is launching any data, so the capture flop should catch in the next clock cycle. So generally we check the setup for the uh, uh, capture flop in the next clock cycle and hold check is on the same clock cycle. So here it is not possible because see here, this is a large combinational logic is there. So the data which is coming from Q, the signal which is like your output of the U1 is going to the combinational logic and then it is coming to the U2. So from D to here, Q, this one, U1 to U2, there is a logic, combinational logic, which is taking a lot of time. So it is not possible for the capture flop to capture the data in a one clock cycle because here there is some delay. So this is not possible. So anyhow, this path will fail if you are not providing any multi-cycle path. So what we do is we tell the tool that this uh, path is an exceptional. 
this is not your normal path. So here you can give some uh, flexibility that the capture flop can capture the data at a particular number of clock cycle. If it is not able to um, capture the data at that particular uh, clock cycle, then we can say that there is some setup or hold time violation or some timing error is there. So this you need to provide to the tool, this information, okay? So for providing this information, we have certain constraints like multi-cycle constraints. So how to write? So before going to how to write the constraints, let us see what happens in the normal case. So friends, this is the launch clock or the clock at the uh, launch flip-flop, the first one, U1. Just now we have seen no? U1. So that is at this time. So when the clock is there, so what is expected? The default setup and hold time behavior. How the setup and hold checks are done. Like we know that the setup time is the minimum amount of time that the data should be stable before the act, uh, arriving of the data input. Okay, the data should be stable before the clock arrives. This is setup time and hold time is uh, the data should be stable after the clock arrives. So it is like uh, when you have one second, I will uh, draw. Yeah, so like this is your clock. So the data should be stable before the clock arrives. So this is the time where your data is not allowed to change. This is called as the setup time. Similarly, the data should be stable after the arrival of the clock for certain duration. So that is called the hold time. So the data should be stable for certain duration of time before and after the arrival of the clock. Okay, so that is called the setup and hold time. So how to check the setup and hold time? The setup like your launch clock is launching the clock data at a particular edge of the launch clock, then it should be, this should be captured by the capture clock in the next clock cycle, okay? So launch clock, is sending the data at this tick. So it should be captured by the capture clock at the second edge of the clock. Okay, so this is the time given for the clock, one clock period for the uh, data to be captured by the capture clock for setup. But for the hold, we check on the hold on the same clock edge. Okay, so friends, this is the default behavior. If you want to go into detail about the setup and hold time, I have made a separate video you can check I will provide the link in the description box. So I hope that this is clear. The basic uh, concept is clear. Like when you are uh, sending the data at all, suppose you are sending the data at this point. So it is allowed for the capture clock to take one clock period to uh, receive the data. Okay. So this is the time period allowed for uh, taking the data. Like suppose your school is uh, some, uh, your college or your school is some five kilometers away from your home. So I uh, suppose your teacher is giving you 30 minutes for you to walk. So um, you have, this is the grace time. So even in that time period, if you are not able to reach at your uh, destination point, then it is a uh, considered as a late or here we can say that it is considered as a late. So for the setup, it is one clock period and for the hold, it is checked at the same time, at the same end, right? So. Now we will see when we provide the whole time, uh, sorry, this multi-cycle path constraints, what happens and how we can provide that. So friends, this is the setup and whole time check when multi-cycle path is uh, provided. So here uh, for setup only. So what happens, you are providing the multi-cycle uh, constraints like set multi-cycle path. You are mentioning here only setup. Some number of clock cycles you can mention here, like two, three, sorry. You can mention some number of clock cycles here from flip-flop one to flip-flop Q of D, okay? From the output of first flip-flop to the input of the second flip-flop, okay? So here, you can see that it can be two, three, any number of cycles, n number of cycles, which you are giving the permission for the uh, capture clock to capture the data. So only one constraint, if you are mentioning, this is one way to mention the multi-cycle path where you are just mentioning the setup time, okay? You are giving only information about the setup. But what happens here is you can see, as we know, this is the clock at the launching clock and this is the clock at the capture clock. So as expected, suppose uh, in, if you are not providing any information, so as you know that this should capture from here at this point and the hold is at this same point, but we are providing the constraints 
So we have given instead of uh, this point, now the permission is given to the capture clock to capture the data at this point. Okay. So here it is permitted to capture. So here the step the setup will be checked. If it is passing the setup window, then okay, the data is not showing any, like our path is not showing any setup violation, we can assume, right? So here this is fine. But what happens is if you provide only the setup information, the hold uh, will consider one cycle earlier than the setup. This is what we have in default. So if your setup is here, so next clock, previous clock cycle edge is considered as your default hold check when multiple cycle path is given for a setup only. So actually this is not correct, okay? Because hold time should not change. Hold time is the same. That is like your data should not be uh, changing once the clock is applied because if your data is changing, so you are not going to get the previous data which is actually required. Like what we said, what the two between the two flops, this is suppose one flop and this is one, another flop. Between this, you are transmitting some data and because of the some combinational logic is there, you are giving some more time. So if you are checking, uh, if you are providing uh, more cycles to the whole time, means what your data is allowed to change. So a new data is coming. But what is expected, the same data which is we are transmitting should be reached to the destination after some number of clock cycles, right? So the hold time should be the same, but the setup time can be the number of uh, cycles which we are mentioning. So the, this will not work because what happens here, you are providing only the setup time. So the whole time is also changed because whole setup time uh, affects the whole time. So the whole time depends upon the setup time. It is the previous cycle if you are not mentioning anything. So to avoid this confusion, what we can do is we can provide a constraint for the set hold also. So how can we do that? Uh, by providing a constraint to the hold path also. So here you can see we have two constraints. One is for the setup so and one is for the hold. So what I have given here, uh, see, this is the hold path constraint. So at this point, so here we have given in this path, we have given two constraints. One is for the setup and one is for the hold. So first we will go with the setup and then I will explain how this is uh, correctly checking the hold path, right? So first of all, you can see that as in the previous example, we, this is the clock at the launch flop and this is the clock at the capture flop. So the data is launched here. So you are giving two cycles. So actually this is the one and this is the two. So it is allowed to catch at this point, right? So at this point, it will check the setup one. So setup check with the MCP constraint, multi-cycle path constraint. This is true. But if you are not providing this whole time, constraint what will happen it will take one cycle below so it will try to check at this point so to avoid that we can give one more constraint that multi-cycle path hold one from flip-flop one output to flip-flop two input so how it will work generally like your hold cycles the whole cycles are calculated uh, using this formula now, like you have the setup value whatever you are mentioning in the uh, for constraint. So that is uh, your setup value. Here, how much it is? It is 2. 2 minus, it is 1 minus the hold cycles. Okay. So what is this here? Uh, setup is, I, I we know that it is uh, 2. So 2 minus 1. And what is the hold cycle value we have given? It is also 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So it is checking at this point. Always remember that if you are providing this as a two, you have to take it this as, if this is n, you can take it this as n minus one. So what will happen using this formula, you will be taking at that point only where it has to be. Try to understand why we are not checking the hold at the beginning because we want to capture the data which we are transmitting now. And if we are giving only time for the data to reach to the destination, we don't want a new data to enter into this uh, scenario. So what we are doing is we are holding the same data for this time. So hold is check is this and the time is given to capture the uh, same data by the uh, give, providing this setup constraint, multi-cycle path constraint, uh, constraint and using this setup and hold. 
So this is how we write the constraints for the multi-cycle path. Uh, once again, I'll repeat that monthly cycle paths are the paths which require more than one clock cycles to uh, reach the destination, okay, to reach the capture flow. Why? Because there can be some logic which is taking more number of uh, clock cycles. So here you have to remember one thing that you have to provide this information to the tool. The tool has no knowledge about which is a multi-cycle path. So you have two ways. One is giving uh, using uh, only set of path, but the problem is that it will, the tool will take the hold as uh, if you are providing a uh, setup as a two, then it will take one. So what will happen? There is a uh, chances of the losing the data, which we are want to hold for a particular uh, clock cycles, right? So what we can do is we can uh, add one more uh, constraint considering the hold check. So the formula is hold cycle is nothing but equal to setup value minus one minus hold cycle. So whole cycle constraint value. So it is two minus one minus one. So it will check at this point. The whole check is at zero point, right? The moment the data is launched, it is checked whether the data is stable at that particular moment or not, whether the data is not changing at this clock moment or not. This is for the whole time. And here, if you, what you are doing is, you are checking whether the data is available stable before the arrival of this clock at this point, okay? So if this happens, what we will get, we will achieve a proper data at the capture clock after this number of clock cycles. So friends, this is all about uh, the uh, multi-cycle path and how to write a multi-cycle path using these constraints, okay? So I hope this video has given you a basic idea about how to write the multi-cycle path and what they are in VLSA use in uh, static timing analysis uh, please like share and subscribe and if you have any query in, uh, please uh, put it in the description box i will definitely try to work on it thank you thanks for watching